I am completely fucking clueless. Welcome, boys and girls, ladies and gents, people of all genders and ages. This is the Musical Empathy. This is a brand spanking new channel where you can hear all about my life stories of how I've accidentally burnt things to a crisp and maybe some actual uh, deep thoughts, maybe? I don't know. I'll be completely honest, I already want to burn this channel to the ground. I am your lovely host for the evening, morning, afternoon, middle of the night for you wonderful night owls. It really does depend on when you're watching this. Now, I'll be the first to admit, when I was a kid, I was a bit of a firebug. I was, for some strange reason, fascinated with fire and the damage it could do to sticks, leaves, ants. Mostly sticks and leaves on ant piles. I may or may not have had a bit of vendetta against bugs. But, funnily enough, most of the damage I ended up doing as a kid was entirely on accident. One of the most prominent memories of me accidentally destroying something was actually when I was in middle school. Back then, Easy Mac was a really big thing to me. I absolutely loved the disgusting sludge that came out of it. And it was what I normally ate in the mornings for breakfast. Keep in mind a few important key facts in for this story. The first being, my mom was a penny pincher. She would buy these old bin rice bowl meals. And after she would finish the meal, she would then save the bowl so we could reuse it again to microwave something else. Uh, they were these flimsy black bowls too, but that's another important point. The other is I have a sister who is older than me, and at this point in time she was in high school. Well, her school started at 7.30, mine didn't start until 8.30. So my mom would spend about 30 minutes driving my sister to school leaving me at the house alone, unsupervised, for half an hour. I bet you can see the recipe of disaster that's slowly being built up here. Well, like I mentioned, I cooked these Easy Mac meals for breakfast almost every morning. And it was a pretty simple routine. Dump the macaroni in the bowl, fill the bowl up with water, and pop it in the microwave. Well, and keep in mind, this happened not once, but twice, I would forget the water. I wouldn't know I forgot the water until all of a sudden I would smell this faint, burning plastic smell. I would go to get my macaroni to see what was going on, and safe to say, for the water is a really important part, because you will completely blacken the macaroni, and possibly melt through the bowl. Which happened to me twice. Yeah. My mom made sure my dad was awake after that to make sure I didn't do it again. Thankfully, it didn't happen again. My dad made sure I would remember the water and after a while I grew out of the Easy Mac stuff. The rest of the rice bowls were saved and I actually spent a good few years not destroying something else in the kitchen until I graduated high school. Yeah, most of these stories are going to be in my more recent years. I don't know how I managed to escape this stuff as a kid. My early morning breakfast disaster struck again once I was in college. My dad, during one of his grocery trips, actually had found these Pillsbury breakfast scrambler things. And I actually thought that looked pretty interesting. I mean, eggs, cheese, and sausage, all wrapped up in one little package, and far tastier than Pop-Tarts to me. So, my dad got them for me. Thankfully, I only had one disaster with these breakfast scramblers. It was the first time I ever cooked them. Admittedly, I could have paid closer attention to the instructions, but I didn't, which is how this all starts. Pretty much, I had a choice between the t our toaster oven and this old pop-up toaster that my sister affectionately called the Brave Little Toaster because it looked like the Brave Little Toaster 
from that old movie. Well, keep in mind, this toaster was older than me and my sister combined. It had been in the house for as long as I could remember, and I'm pretty sure my mom kept it. She liked to keep old, uh, antique kitchen appliances. Either way, I decided to go ahead and pop these breakfast scramblers into the toaster, pull down the little lever, and then I went to watch some TV before uh, while I wait for class. I was waiting for class. So I sit down, I start watching some TV while I wait for my breakfast to be finished, and after about five minutes, I notice things getting a little hazy in the room. I didn't think too much of it until I turned around and looked over the back of the couch. Keep in mind, my house at the time was an open floor plan, so you could easily see from the living room into the kitchen. And you know what, you want to know what I saw in the kitchen? Fire! The toaster was on fire. Thankfully, I knew what to do. I knew that there was a fire extinguisher in the kitchen and I had to put the toaster out. So I opened up the back door that was right off the kitchen, propped the storm door open, and then I went scrambling into the kitchen to try to find the fire extinguisher. All the while, I'm screaming for my dad. The fire alarm is going off. I'm trying not to have a panic attack because there is a toaster on fire. Eventually, my dad does come downstairs and he sees the toaster on fire. He proceeds to pick it up with his bare hands, toss it into the sink, unplug it, and then he turns on the faucet. I had just found the fire extinguisher and my dad puts it out with the sink. Unfortunately, that day is now known as the day that I killed the brave little toaster. And unfortunately, not the last time I set something on fire. It would be another couple of years before I actually set something else on fire, and thankfully, outside instead of in the kitchen. I was out in the backyard grilling chicken for dinner that night. When I had closed the grill cover, sat down in the chair next to the grill, and started playing on my phone. I didn't realize how tricky grilling chicken could be, especially with all the grease that chicken can sort of excrete, drip down into the fire, and the fire can follow the grease. It's a fairly simple story. I closed the grill cover. The chicken caught fire. I actually found the fire extinguisher on time this time, but dinner was a bit ruined that night. I think I have only one story where I set something on fire and not on accident. And not at camp either. It was a dark and stormy night. Literally, it was pretty fucking dark and stormy. The power had just gone out at the house. And I was left alone downstairs in the dark. My sister had already gone to bed and my dad had gone upstairs for one reason or another. So I'm going around downstairs lighting a couple of candles so we can actually see what's going on down there. Light is amazing. Well, before this, I had already found out that Kleenexes apparently catch fire really well. Not only do they catch fire, but they put off a lot of light. So I took a Kleenex, put it in one of the empty candle holders that we had, and I set it on fire. It was really bright. I could see really well. And when my dad who came downstairs, he could see really well. He was not happy. Thanks for watching my first ever video. I really do hope you guys enjoyed it, and I really do appreciate you guys sticking around until the end. I really do hope you guys take a look at those like and subscribe buttons and hopefully maybe subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and possibly music analysis and video analysis and who knows. This is a brand new channel and I don't really have much plan for it. Keep in mind, I don't have much plan for it. I'm going to be flying by the seat of my pants the entire way down. Who wants to join the ride?